I'm here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, where it's estimated that over 20,000 children work and live on the street. But there's an organization to help. They are trying to save a generation from poverty, violence, and drugs. And I want to know how. I'm Alvin Hall. 25 years on Wall Street have taught me a lot about business. But now I'm on a new journey around the world, meeting a new breed of entrepreneur, more interested in doing good than making money. Social entrepreneurs. And I want to help. These kids remind me of what being young is all about. Sadly for me, that was a long time ago. I am too old to attempt breakdancing. For me, breakdancing would break something and I'd end up in a hospital. <laughs> I'm used to seeing urban street dancers in New York, and these kids are pretty good. More importantly, they're enjoying themselves and being creative, a welcome sight in this city. Here, Half the population is under 21. Tens of thousands of children are forced to live and work on the street. Well, it's sort of overwhelming. I think the kids are playful as all kids are, whether they're rich or poor. Uh, they're just living in horrible circumstances. And it's, it's easy to see why. You know, if you were to run across these kids, you'd want to save them, you want to offer them some hope instead of being trapped in this type of world. I'm here to meet someone who feels exactly the same, social entrepreneur Sebastian Marot. Hello. Good to see you. It's great Welcome. To see you. He's founder of Friends International, a social enterprise devoted to helping street children. I started in 94 when I came here as a tourist. I was going to live and work in Japan. I stopped here, met the kids, found the situation absolutely unacceptable started work and mm -hmm. friends grew from that. Really? It's just, you were just passing through just on your passing way? passing through. Today, friends help 16,000 children a year in Phnom Penh, from babies to young adults. They provide emotional support, basic education, and for some, a place to live. But their focus is vocational training, enabling kids to earn their way off the streets for good. So we build from the streets, protecting them on the streets, getting them off the street into a program that then will lead them to a real sustainable life. And the kids were able to articulate the fact that they wanted education? They said specifically education, and that's where I made my first mistake. Coming from the West, I said education, teacher, classroom. Within two weeks, all the kids had left. And we realized that education meant actually making money, finding a way to, and that's vocational training, not schooling. Friends has now spread beyond Cambodia and has 500 staff working in seven different countries. It spends $5.5 million annually. It helps 50,000 vulnerable young people around the world each year. It raised $1.6 million from its businesses in 2009. Their help is desperately needed. It's thought that three quarters of street children in Phnom Penh turn to drugs. This young man is being trained by friends as a chef. He started using drugs after violence split his family. We had family problems. My stepfather beat my mom, so I didn't want to stay there. When I first arrived on the street, it was tough. There were lots of street gangsters who sometimes beat me. I started sniffing glue, and I'd also smoke other drugs. It made me feel good. When I used it, it made me happy, and all the stress and suffering would go away. He isn't the only member of his family being helped by friends. His sister attends classes, and his mother has trained as a seamstress. Friends sells the products she makes, providing both her and the organization with income. Friends believes that a child's life is best improved by working with their entire family. We start supporting the family before the kid is able to join us. You support the family? Tell me about this. I didn't realize that. It's training the women to produce things. We help them sell. The income goes back into the family and back to the organization. 
This business model offers every chance for a better life, but removing all the scars of the past will be an uphill struggle. This tattoo is a sword. When I was using drugs, I'd like to fight. The sword shows I like to fight and I would beat people up for money. I wouldn't fight now. This is training center. If I fight, I'll be kicked out. Friends works hard to bring stability to these fragile lives. People who live on the street are always being forced to move on. This is Ang Dong. When the city government clears slums and homeless people, they relocate them to places like this. In the last 12 years, it's estimated that over 40,000 families have been forced to leave what they call home. You can see from the open sewers and shanties that this is a very bleak place. But Friends is providing hope. It built a safe, clean space for up to 50 of these displaced women to train and work together. What was the motivation behind building a production center here? Well, we, as you know, we started from the home base. And with the home base, you can only go that far. In a production center, it allowed us to, uh, first of all, take women from homes that are really, really not adequate, and on the other, to the next, pushing us to the next level of production, where we can increase the quantity, the quality, and by working together, actually have this, this mass production that we're looking for. Back in the city, Sebastian took me to one of the three friend shops that sells goods the families have made. They contribute almost a quarter of the revenue generated by friends in Cambodia. The price of this is more than reasonable, $7? That's pretty good. And these bags up here are really good too. Love these. A little retail therapy is impossible to resist. Over two million tourists visit Cambodia every year. I'm glad Friends is tapping into that market, and not just with their shops. Friends, a superb tapas restaurant with delicious shakes and sharp cocktails, helping street children into the restaurant industry. The fact that they're in the top 10 must mean that the food is pretty good, because there are lots of good local restaurants here, but they must have something that sets them apart. I'm going to see what that is. This restaurant is typical of Friends. It's a training center and a business. I'm here to meet Gustav, the manager. Hello, I'm Alvin Hall. Hi, I'm Gustav. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So this is a restaurant run by Friends. Yes, that's it. Yes. How long has it been here? Uh, we opened in February 2001, so 2000. it's nearly nine years. This restaurant certainly seems to have built up quite a following. But what about the money? So what kind of profit are we talking about? On a good month, the average profit in 2008, uh, I think it was about $18,000 a month. Mm -hmm. That's profit. not bad. I, th I think it's very good. And what other restaurants that you have, are they equally profitable? Not as profitable as this one is. And because this one, first of all, has been here longer. It is very, it's well known. It's like from the Lonely Planet, do TV shows. Many people know about it. And it has a very good reputation. And it's international food. It's clearly doing very well generating lots of money to help even more street children. Can this magic be spread to other parts of the business? Looking at all these paintings and drawings on the wall in this restaurant makes me think that maybe there's another way that Friends International can use them to generate income. It's an intriguing thought, but right now I need to check out Friends' newest restaurant, Ram Dang. Gustav thinks it has real potential. So what's going to happen with this empty room? So this we're going to use for, uh, first of all, as an exhibition space. We have young Cambodian artists who will, will exhibit their art here from other organizations or private artists. Yes, and you have a gorgeous, gorgeous terrace. And that fits about 25 people outside as well. When you look at this restaurant, how beautiful it is, I would think a lot of locals would come here. Is that the case? It actually is. It's about 40% of our customers are Cambodians, which we are very proud of because this is a market that really needs to be discovered more and worked on more because there's a very fast-growing middle and upper class in Cambodia, especially in Phnom Penh. What type of profits do you see here month to month? 
But since the opening, the business has been improving steadily. It never yes. went down. Even right now, even though in a recession, we are still getting more money, but not as much as France the restaurant, but it's still getting better. It's still moving to the right direction, so you're but hopeful. just slowly. So you're hopeful. I think the concept is fantastic. The place is beautiful. The food is delicious. Why would it not work? Like Gustav, I'm optimistic. This could be a real moneymaker for friends. Now I want to look at the figures for the whole organization. How do all the businesses add up? It's impressive that Sebastian has so many ideas. And looking at his financial statements, it's clear that he is able to stretch the money he has to its ultimate cost effectiveness. But I wonder, with all of these ideas, maybe it's better for him to focus or at least prioritize him. Otherwise, he's all over the place.